Hi, this is Arash and uh, welcome to the epoxy channel. In this channel, we're going to talk about the epoxy resin from the theoretical aspects to the most practical ones. So, if this is the first video that you're watching or if you're interested in epoxy resins, please like and subscribe our channel for more videos. Today, we are going to talk about thermoset resins, general concepts. Before we enter the main subject, which is epoxies, we need to know more about some basic terminology in polymer fields, such as monomer, polymer, and polymerization. Polymers are long molecules consisting of smaller building blocks with a set of properties that do not change remarkably by the addition of one or a few number of building blocks. And monomers are these building blocks or repeating units. What is a polymer? A polymer is a chemical structure with a long chain consisting of smaller building blocks called monomers. Polymerization is a chemical reaction that sets these monomers together as a polymer. Therefore, polymerization is the reaction or process which converts monomer to polymers. There are two major types of polymerization, step growth polymerization and chain growth polymerization. The type of polymerization strongly depends on the monomer type. Monomer with at least two functional groups like OH COOH in amine can contribute to polymerization through condensation or step growth reactions. The best examples of this group are uh, polyesters, polyamides, and polyurethanes. Herein you can see a simplified approach of polyamide synthesis in which the amine group reacts with the carboxylic acid and forms amide groups repeatedly. On the other side, unsaturated monomers like styrene contribute to additional or chain growth polymerization and turn into polystyrene. Free radical polymerization, ionic chain reaction, and complex coordination polymerization are the main classes of this type of polymerization. Polyolefins like polyethylene and polypropylene are familiar members of this type of polymerization. Polymers, uh, like other materials, have specific physical properties. It is important to note that all of these properties are reported as average values and there is no certain number for them. DP, or the degree of polymerization, refers to the number of monomers per each polymer chain. MW, or molecular weight, is the measure of the sum of uh, the atomic weight values of the atoms in a molecule. Molecular weight is reported in different forms, with the different average molecular weight and weight average molecular weight being the main two ones. The polydispersity index is the ratio of weight average molecular weight to the number average molecular weight. In fact, polymer bulks consist of a number of entangled chains with different lengths and generally lack order. They can form amorphous and semi-crystalline structures based on the type of polymer. Polymers having a scale of order are called semi-crystalline and exhibit a melting temperature. Otherwise, the polymer does not have a melting temperature and only has a glass transition temperature, or TG temperature. The glass transition temperature, TG, is the temperature at which an amorphous polymer changes from a hard glassy state to a soft leathery state or vice versa. We know what is density and density is generally lower than that of water for most polymers. Mechanical performance in uh, thermoplastic is increased by an increase in molecular weight or higher degree of polymerization, a decrease in PDI, polydispersity index, an increase in TG, 
for higher molecular weight and an increase in crystallinity percentage. It is also necessary to be familiar with some other common terminologies in the polymer fields. First, glassy and rubbery states. Polymers above a certain temperature can be flexible, and this flexible state is called the rubbery state. Melt flow index or MFI. It is uh, reciprocally related to the molecular weight and is a measure of the ease of flow of the melt of a thermoplastic polymer. It is defined as the mass of polymer in grams following in 10 minutes based on specific standard conditions. Processing temperature. This refers to the temperature at which a polymer can be easily processed in the injection molding or extrusion processes. Finally, mechanical performance. Different applications require different values of mechanical strength. Mechanical properties can be measured as follows. Tensile strength, compression strength, flexural strength, torsional strength, and the impact strength. Classification of polymers. Polymers can be classified based on different factors. One of the most commonly seen factors is molecular architecture. Here we have different architectures. Linear, branched, cross-linked, and dendritic polymers. The next classification can be based on tacticity, and based on tacticity, the polymers can be divided into isotactic, syndiotactic, and a tactic. Another classification can be based on the order, where we have glassy, amorphous, and semi-crystalline polymers. Classification based on monomer, having more than one type of monomer can change the name from a homopolymer to a copolymer. The next classification is based on viscoelastic behavior. Herein, there are thermoplastics and thermosets. Thermoplastics are divided into uh, thermoplastic elastomers, plastics, thermosets, might have uh, rigid networks, uh, cured epoxy resins, for example, or a flexible network, like elastomers or gels. Cured epoxy resins are thermosets with rigid and tough networks. And uh, finally, the source of the polymer is also important. Polymers uh, that were synthesized by nature are called natural polymers, while the others are synthetic, which could be bio-based or fossil-based. The molecular architecture of a polymer is a key factor that directly affects the mechanical performance of the polymers. Based on the structure, we have linear, comb-like, graft, branched, star-shaped, dendritic, and cross-linked networks. An increase in the number of branches in the polymer structure can improve its mechanical performance since it creates more entanglements. Linear polymers, mostly called plastics, can be easily deformed by applying any force. In fact, the linear chains can simply untangle and slide over each other, allowing the product to deform during its service. However, the presence of branches can slightly block this sliding, resulting in more dimensional stability and less creep. The covalently cross-linked network inhibits the free uh, movement of the chains, leading to high uh, thermomechanical properties in the uh, thermoset resins. It is important to keep in mind that cross-links are uh, the linkages between polymer chains. Thermoplastics are polymers that melt into a soft pliable form above a certain temperature and solidify upon cooling. They are remeltable and can be reshaped. On the other side, we have thermosets. They are polymeric structures that remain in a permanent solid state once they are cured. Polymer chains within the material are cross-linked by a cross-linking agent during the curing process. The created covalent bonds are un unbreakable and irreversible. But what is curing? It is a reaction between functional groups of the curing agent and resin or pre-polymer. 
It results in solidification of the polymeric structure. It can be activated by heating or irradiation. You are somehow related to the polymer industry. You might be familiar with the word resins. Do you have an idea of its definition? In polymer chemistry and material science, resin is a solid or highly viscous substance of plants or synthetic origin that is typically convertible into polymers. Resins are usually mixtures of organic compounds. There are various types of uh, thermosetting resins, for example, phenolic resins, amino resins, polyester resins, unsaturated, silicon resins, uh, polyurethanes, and finally the most important class of resins for us, epoxy resins. Now it is time to talk about the thermoset forms. In other words, uh, what are the main pr uh, approaches to cure a resin or a pre-polymer? Generally, there are three approaches to fabricate a cured or cross-linked network. In one approach, both the monomer and crosslinker simultaneously contribute to a depolymerization reaction. In another approach, the prepolymer or resin has been previously synthesized and functionalized. At this stage, it becomes, it becomes crosslinked to form a well-molded structure using a curing agent, hardener, or a crosslinker. These terms are equivalent to the curing agent, hardener, curative, or crosslinker. The prepolymer or resin and crosslinker should have at least two functional groups that have the ability to react with each other. This is frequently called a curing reaction. In the last approach, there is a reaction between the polymer and the peroxide. The peroxide can be activated by temperature and then free radical crosslinking occurs. This approach can be conducted for uh, polymers with high molecular weight and the peroxide content determines the crosslinking density. In brief, we can summarize some major advantages of thermosets over thermoplastics as higher dimensional stability. Thermosets do not shrink, deform, wrap or lose their shape in extreme cold and heat temperatures. They have lower viscosity and they are easy to work. Thermoses exist in liquid uh, form before curing, making them easier to handle and work with due to the lower viscosity. Better moldability and flowability. Thermosets allow for the, the creation of larger overall parts and more complex and detailed geometry shapes compared to plastics, which have limitations in this respect. Easily uh, strengthened with reinforcing materials, thermosets can be uh, further strengthened by incorporation reinforcing material materials into their structure. Uh, they also show higher chemical and scratch resistance. Thermosets exhibit a higher resistance to chemicals and scratches, making them more durable. The higher functionality of the resins in hardener in thermoset leads to higher crosslink density and consequently higher stiffness. The functionality of the resin and crosslinker can directly affect the mechanical properties of thermosets. Overall, these advantages make thermosets uh, preferable for various applications where dimensional stability, strain and durability are essential requirements. Thanks for your attention to this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please share your thoughts, questions, or comments on this video. See you soon.